Most people are familiar with basic systems of design like finding thirds through the armature of the rectangle or just breaking a rectangle down in force. But I want to show you something a little more interesting and that's applying a 1.5 traditional golden section rectangle to a 35 millimeter full frame. And there's a really good reason for that because the SEMO sensor of all the top name brands these days is actually a square and a half in dimension. The traditional 1 to 1.5 golden section rectangle goes way back to the Renaissance. There's also a long history of classical design uh, since the early days of photography because most of the people coming here were coming from painting. A lot of them had those traditional skills and they just applied it to whatever notional space that was available, whether that was the first uh, 4x5s or whatever arbitrary cropping they would do in the darkroom process that made the best use of the space they had in camera. And I think the internal dimensions of the first 35 millimeters were also a square and a half because you can clearly see this in a lot of the early work. And the people who did that best in terms of 35 millimeter full frame photography were the people who founded Magnum in the late 40s. Some of them had classical training as painters, specifically Bresson, and they applied this old school golden section rectangle to this new medium and they work within that space. And so they're designing and printing in the full frame of the camera and you can see the black borders on the edges. And you can track classical design in Magnum alum from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, even right up into this day. It's still there. So how do we find it? There's a couple different ways to find the golden section of any rectangle. Since we're talking about old school stuff, today I'm just going to go old school and do it manually. You take the diagonal of any rectangle, you find the right angle from the corner through that diagonal, and where that intercepts the edge of the rectangle, that is the golden section. It's as simple as that. You do that twice, and now you have a reciprocal on both sides. A reciprocal is simply a smaller shape of the same size and dimensions as the original shape within that shape, and with the golden section you can do that to infinity. And now the second obvious question is how do you make this happen in camera in real time? But it doesn't have to be perfect, it can just be close like this example right here. How do you know where the lines are? How do you know where those angles are? And it's also kind of simple. It's just repetition and pattern recognition over long periods of time. It's how you get good at anything. If you've ever played a sport, how do you achieve that flow state? How do you make things happen uh, as a natural reaction without thinking of it? It's reps. It's just putting in those reps. It's going to take years. There is no shortcut. I started as a classically trained painter as well, and I did it with a pencil and paper. And then when I started applying it to film, it was the 90s, and so I had three formats, 35 millimeter, medium format, and 4x5. I could take the prism off of all three and put an acetate grid inside there and train that way. I would also use a grid on the projector table in my darkroom. Now you can just create a grid in any design program that allows you to export a PNG without a background. Or you can do it in Photoshop in layers and have a lot more complexity. I mean, if you look at this grid, there is a lot of variations here. There's a lot of angles. If I want to really get into detail here, there's a lot of opportunity to play with different kinds of designs within this simple 1.5 golden section grid. 